Well, what's going on is that the LBMA and the COMEX have been engaged in fraudulent behavior for many years by lending out gold for sale to keep the price down. You know, the gold's been kept down in price. As, as much manipulation as there is in the, in the other aspects of the market, let's say in the U.S. dollar market, as much manipulation as goes on in global markets and as much of the shenanigans we see in the central banks and 0% interest rates. And Neil Kashkari recently went on 60 Minutes and said that the Fed has a, quote, infinite amount of money. So in order to keep an infinite amount of money bid, in, in order to keep it viable, you have to suppress the price of gold. We've been saying that, you know, the Gold Antitrust Action Committee, GATA, put out a report back in the early 2000s. And that was the first report that Stacy found that she thought, you know, this is really fascinating stuff. We should do a film about this. And this was our first film we made ever for Al Jazeera English back in 2003, I believe, about GATA and the suppression of gold. And that story has been, has been developing for years. We were the ones who told Germany to repatriate their gold. We made a movie in Germany and exposed in the Bundesbank when the crash of 2008 happened. We asked them, where's the gold? right in the Bundesbank. We were eyewitnesses. And they said, oh, it's in New York. And the German public had never had an actual Bundesbank official admit publicly that the gold was in New York. They had talked about it theoretically, but they never had admission from a Bundesbank official. Within uh, a year, uh, Germany went ahead and they started to repatriate their gold. And then other countries started to repatriate their gold. A lot of countries are repatriating their gold. And of course, the gold supply, according to the LBMA and COMEX, is a lot less than the paper market. The paper market is a scam. There are, for every ounce of gold, there's probably, you know, I don't know, a lot. Let's say uh, many, many, many more ounces of paper gold. And if, if when you have a run on these exchanges like you have now with the LBMA or the COMEX, it's just like any run. Uh, it causes chaos and the price is immaterial because there's just none available. You can't get it. You know, I've been a big buyer of gold since 2003, a big buyer of silver also since 2003. And I got into Bitcoin through gold and through silver because I recognized it in 2011 that it was a gold substitute, that it is hard money. And right now in the gold market, because of the mm -hmm. failure of the LBMA and the COMEX to be able to deliver, uh, they're having a massive run on those exchanges like we saw in the gold pool days of the 1960s. There's uh, gold is hard to come by. But people are beginning to come around to the fact that w when they see that every single problem is being addressed by printing more money, when they see that in the, 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 the market collapse of the past is met with six trillion in money printing and this idea of infinite quantitative easing, right? So it shows that the central bank and they show the stock market. And they, so the central bank is trying to pump up the stock market by printing money. So those two things are now in people's consciousness. That has, that's new. Nobody up until recently understood that the stock market is the product of money printing solely, that the companies are not earning more, the companies are not more productive, the companies are not better managed, they're simply buying back their own stock with printed money. And as a result, you have this enormous Ponzi scheme. And so the people, people understand that. And now instinctively they say, well, if I want to get out of the Ponzi scheme, where do I go? And there's gold, silver, Bitcoin. 